In Sirat Rasul Allah, Dihya was offered two female slaves in exchange for Safiya. But in Sahih Muslim, he got seven slaves. How come from two slaves ending up to seven slaves? There must be a tough negotiation between Dihya and the Prophet. Razalullah, that is not fair at all. You had given Safiya to me. I changed my mind. I will give you two of Safiya's young cousins in her place. You will love them. They are both pretty and fresh. You can have great fun tonight. Razalulla, I don't enjoy those girls. You can keep them, just return Safiya to me. Dia don't be a pest. I will sweeten the pot and throw in these young men. You can have great moment tonight, with all five of them. I don't like them either. Please kindly return my Safiya. What about two more women? Just take these seven slaves, seven heads in all. Okay? Razalullah, I have enough slaves from the last jihad. I just need Safiya. Dia, you stubborn mule. Just take what I offered before I change my mind and have your private part removed instead. Dihya knew the Prophet meant what he said. He took the seven slaves and left in a hurry. Prophet Muhammad then hurried to his tent with Safiya. When Muhammad made advances toward Safiya, she resisted. How could she submit to a man who had just killed her near and dear ones just a few hours back? What is your problem, Safiya? I don't like those who kill innocent men and assault their women. What are you talking about? It was not us, but Allah who killed them by our hands. Here is the verse, Quran. Surah Al-Anfal, verse 17. It is not ye who slew them, it was Allah. Besides, Kufar are never innocent, they are fair games for us. Once we kill them, we are allowed sex with their wives and daughters. This is according to Quran, Surah An nisa verse 3 and 24, Surah Al-Mukminun, verse 6, Surah Al-Azab, verse 50, Surah Al-Ma'arij, verse 30. So stop this nonsense and let me have you. I don't have time to waste. If you resist I will give you back to Dia and bring in other girls. Safiya realized resistance was futile. At that time, the Prophet was about 59 years old, while Safiya was only 17. I'll be assaulted anyway, either by the Prophet or another Muslim. At least the Prophet had a regular supply of slave girls from his 20% cut of booty and many resident wives. I will be hit less for sex less often. With a regular Muslim, I would be harmed day and night then sold in a slave market to the highest bidder. While the Prophet was lying with Safiya, he heard some movement near his tent. He decided to go out and find out who the person was. Who is that? It's me, Abu Ayyub, Ya Razalullah. What are you doing around my tent? I was afraid for you with this young lady. You had killed her father, her husband and many of her relatives, and until recently she was an unbeliever. I was really afraid for you on her account and was guarding you. Oh, good. This is from the History of Al-Tabari, Volume 39, Page 185. Abu Huraira said, while the Prophet was lying with Safiya, Abu Ayyub stayed the night at his door. When he saw the Prophet in the morning he said, God is the greatest. He had a sword with him, he said to the Prophet, O Messenger of God, this young woman had just been married, and you killed her father, her brother, and her husband, so I did not trust her not to harm you. The Prophet laughed and said, Good. This honest information explained that Prophet Muhammad and his followers did not have any problem whatsoever with killing people in the morning and raping their women and children at night. Well, yeah, as long as those things don't happen to me and my family. Yet, he claimed to be the best moral example for mankind in Quran, Surah al azab verse 21. Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah you have an excellent example for whoever has hope in Allah in the last day and remembers Allah often. So, what is an excellent example in Islam is not about what is good or bad based on universal values, but what Prophet Muhammad liked and disliked. For instance, raping, killing, 
looting are super bad according to universal values. But for Prophet Muhammad, they are not always bad. Look, I have been ordered by Allah to fight the people till they say. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And if they say so, pray like our prayers, face our Qibla, and slaughter as we slaughter. Then their blood and property will be sacred to us, and we will not interfere with them, except legally and their reckoning will be with Allah. According to Bukhari, the Prophet enjoyed Safiya for three days. He liked her very much that he then decided to marry her. Sahih Bukhari, number 4212. Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet stayed with Safiya bint Huya'i for three days on the way of Kabar where he consummated his marriage with her. Safiya was amongst those who were ordered to use a veil. The veil meant that Safiya became Prophet Muhammad's wife, and that she was no longer a sex slave or concubine anymore. Slave women are not allowed to wear the hijab, according to Islamic law. But, the Holy Prophet was so cheap that he decided not to pay a mahar or dowry to Safiya. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 8, Hadith 367. Thubit asked Anas, O Abu Hamza. What did the Prophet pay her as mahar or dowry? He said, herself was her mahar for he manumitted her and then married her. I don't have to pay Sophia her dowry because that meant I had to pay it to myself for manumitting her. For my kindness toward Sophia, Allah would give me two rewards. First is for manumitting Sophia, the second one is for marrying her. She is very lucky to meet a compassionate, generous person like me. Sahih Muslim, Book 8, Number 3327 Abu Musa reported that Allah's messenger said about one who emancipated a slave woman, and then married her, that for him there are two rewards. Did he seriously believe that the Lord would give him two divine rewards? For what? First, for manumitting me, whom no one but himself had enslaved. Second, for marrying me, the prettiest girl who was forty years younger than him. <laughs> Prophet Muhammad intended to force the Jewish Kabar into exile. But the Jews talked him out of it by agreeing to cultivate the land and give half of its earnings to the Prophet. The people of Kaibar lost the ownership of their own land. Now, they have to pay Jizya to me for living on the same land that is now controlled by me. The Jizya is money paid by non-Muslims in order to keep practicing their religion in Muslims' land. Under Islamic law, if the money is not paid, the people are to be killed or enslaved. Tolerance is not free in Islam, okay? Even after paying the jizya for years, the Jewish Kabar eventually were expelled by Umar when he became the second caliph. The following story is from Ahmed, volume 6, page 337, cited in Muhammad. One day, Prophet Muhammad went to do Hajj. He brought two of his wives, Zainab bint Jash and Safiya bint Huyay. On the way, my camel knelt down for it was the weakest among all the other camels. And so I wept. The Prophet came to me. Oh, Sophia, please don't cry. Let me ask Zainab for help. The Prophet went to meet Zainab. The camel of Sophia has fallen sick. What about giving her one of your camels? What? No way. Never should I give it to such a Jewish woman. The Prophet became angry with her and he did not approach her for two months. Don't cry, Sophia, I give you another camel. The Prophet came to me and wiped away my tears with his dress and hands. The more he asked me not to weep, the more I went on weeping. Sophia was captured and had to live among the very people who killed her loved ones. She had nowhere to go and no one to turn for solace. She was despised by everyone around her. The only one who showed affection to her was the very man who killed her father and husband.